What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I want to talk about how I recently decided, or, or I believe that I decided, that I'm going to be selling 40% of one of my accounts, part of my investment portfolio, specifically my Roth IRA, why I believe that I decided on this and what my plan is for that 40% that I'm selling. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for a bunch of videos. Subscribe to my second channel for bonus videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. This right here is the limited edition DYDSS Christmas line. I know Christmas is over, but a portion of the proceeds are going directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and I'm keeping these in the DYDSS store until New Year's Eve, so please move fast. Let's raise a little bit of money for the children with cancer. Try out some G Fuel Energy Formula, $5 off your first order by clicking the link in the description, and of course, make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. They're going to give you up to 12 free fractional shares just for doing so. And if you refer one friend, they're going to give you either $100 or $200 worth of free Apple stock. Just click the little invite button, send it to one person that you know. And you can actually repeat this promo 10 times. So you can get between $1,000 and $2,000 worth of free Apple stock if you refer 10 friends. Weeble link in the description. Everything is linked in the description. All right, so... Today I wanted to talk about something. I have been thinking, to be honest, I've actually been thinking about this for kind of, probably about a year now, if I'm going to be honest with you. I think I'm going to be parting ways with 40% of my Roth IRA. Or should I say, 40% of my current holdings within my Roth IRA. And... One of the reasons that I decided to do this is because, and, and I'm probably going to be doing this in January. I want to finish the year strong. I'm going to keep making my contributions every week as I've been doing uh, with the same positions that I'm currently holding. But in the new year, I think I'm going to make some enhancements. And... For those of you who don't know, my Roth IRA, since I created it, since I opened up my account, I already knew what the allocation was going to look like. I already knew what the structure was going to be. I, it, 100% my way, I designed it. It's a 40-40-10-10 split between four different index funds. Now, if you are a VIP club member... And just the VIP club is just simply the name of my Patreon page where you get access to every single one of my videos early and commercial free. I'm actually going to be posting an update video in the VIP club. Uh, the link's in the description if anybody wants to join. If you're already a member, you're going to get just another bonus video thrown in there. It'll be a VIP exclusive video where I talk about or remind everybody what the 40 40 10 10 split looks like or or more specifically what particular index funds those are and what the exact change is going to be but anyway currently it's a 40 40 10 10 split between four different index funds and the reason I did this was because I wanted maximum exposure and the reason I structured it the way that I did was because I wanted 40% and, and also another 40%. I wanted to highly concentrate on where long-term, stable, sustainable growth is investing in the market, a.k.a. the S&P 500. I wanted that to be the backbone of absolutely everything. I wanted that to be the, the, uh, the foundation of my entire investment portfolio outside of the Roth IRA as well. I, want, I wanted the S&P 500 to be the base, the base layer. So I went 40% that, and I went 40% in a similar index. Now, the problem, well, it's not really a problem. 
it's not creating an issue. But the other 40%, the second index that I went with was one that has the same top 10 holdings of the S&P 500, and it has all 500 companies that the S&P 500 has, as well as mid and small cap companies, aka 82%, or, or how do I word it? It's 82% similar to the S&P 500, aka they are almost identical. This one just has a little bit more added to it than just the S&P 500. So again, this isn't a problem, but it's almost like having two index funds that are basically exactly the same with a, a minor, minor, minor tweak. And then the other two, again, if you want the specifics, that will be a VIP club exclusive, link in the description. But what I decided to do, or what I believe that I decided to do, was I'm going to be parting ways and selling that 40%, the one that almost perfectly mirrors the S&P 500. I'm going to be getting rid of that 40%. And what I'll be doing with the cash, keeping it in the Roth IRA, screw taxes, but I will be shifting and altering allocations. I think instead of 40% S&P, I think I'm going to go closer to 70%. I'm going to keep the 10 and 10, the the two other indexes that I didn't mention, I think I'm going to keep those 10%. Which leaves me with another 10% cash. And what I think I'm going to do with that 10% is I'm going to go into an index that is exclusively what the S&P 500 does not include. AKA that 18% difference in the index that I just parted ways with. And the reason I, I, the reason I am 99% sure that this is what I'm going to do is because the only difference in what I'm doing here, the only, the only thing that's going to be changed is I'm going to have more control over allocation. See, if I'm investing in an index fund, that has large cap, mid cap, and small cap all wrapped up in one, I don't have control over how much of that index covers large cap. Maybe I want 90% to be in large cap and 10% to be in small and mid. Maybe I want to reverse it. Maybe I only want 10% or 20% or 15% or 32% or whatever percent focused on large cap and all of the rest to focus on small and mid. So the only adjustment that I'm making here is that it gives me a little bit more creative control over allocation. See, an index fund, and by the way, there is nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with going all in on just one broad market index fund. I just want to be able to tweak it over time. See, if I have a 40-40-10-10 split, or if I have a 70-10-10-10 split, I can always rebalance the way that I want to and concentrate heavier or lighter on certain areas. Maybe in a couple years time, I don't want it to be structured 70-10-10-10. Maybe I will want it to be, I don't know, 60-20-10-10 if that's what I want to do. And I'll be able to do that without selling an index fund and buying a different one instead. See, this will give me more control over how much of the Roth IRA can focus on the S&P, how much of the Roth IRA can focus on the small and mid caps, how much of the Roth IRA I can focus on the third index, which will 
you know, I'll leave that to, to the imagination or the VIP club, link in the description, and also how much the, the final 10%, if that makes sense. See, see, see here, here's an example I'll, I'll give. There's another index fund out there that I do not own. I've never owned it. And I don't believe I would ever own it, although it is pretty, it is pretty intense. There is a total world index fund which means it holds every single publicly traded company on the planet inside of it. Maximum exposure, there is nothing that it neglects. Covers all bases. But if you invest exclusively in that, and, and, and once again, this isn't a problem. This is not a bad thing. But if you want control over how much your money is going into domestic stock versus international, going as one index fund that takes care of all of it automatically for you, you don't have control over how much is domestic, how much is international. Maybe you, may, maybe you want to focus more on like emerging markets and, and maybe you're really optimistic or bullish on the international markets over the next couple of years but the index fund that you're going with is only maybe 10 or 20 percent international and you'd rather go closer to 40 if that makes sense so basically my Roth IRA is a very small index fund made up of four different index funds it's an index of indexes and I do this for maximum exposure and I do it in a way that gives me control over allocation. And I do it in a way that covers all bases in a way that makes the most sense to me. I only want 10% of this right here. I only want 10% of that over there. And I want, for a while, I wanted 40% in the S&P. And the other 40% was in another index that was so similar to the S&P, it was almost as if 80% was going into the S&P because essentially it was. So now if I structure it that 70% roughly will specifically be going into the S&P, 10% going into what the S&P or what the other index that was similar to the S&P would cover, I can slim that down, the small and mids to 10% as opposed to 18% of what used to make up 40%. I don't know if any of this is really making sense. What I should do is get a marker board and do like a pie chart type of video or something like that. For, for anybody out there that's a little bit more on the visual side of things. But that's really it. See? 18% of 40% is what used to be focused on uh, small and mids. 18% of 40% of the grand total 100% account. Doing it this way, I can very specifically make sure that it's 10%. Anyway, I'm really just thinking out loud over here. I just thought that it was pretty interesting and, and this is kind of unusual for me because believe it or not, uh, so far in my life, I've actually never sold anything. I've never sold a stock. I've never sold an index fund. I've never, I've never, I've never parted ways with anything that I've invested in or converted my dollars into. I have, you know, silver and gold coins and bars and stuff like that. I've never, ever sold any of them. I've never sold any of my investments. So this is like weird for me. I, it, there's a part of me that doesn't really want to do it just because I like, I like the fact that uh, I'm not selling anything. But it's more of a rebalancing and re-strategizing how, how, how I'm allocating, if that makes sense. It's, it's just an allocation play. But anyway... Those are just some of my thoughts. That's just uh, kind of the game plan. I, I'm probably going to do this the first week of January. And uh, I'm excited. Currently on track, I contribute to the Roth IRA every single week. 
just enough so that the last week of the year I will max it out for the year. So I'm excited to max out my Roth IRA this year and I'm looking forward to being able to do it again next year. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you are new. Subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for bonus videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. This right here is the limited edition Christmas line. A portion of the proceeds are going directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You can only get these until New Year's Eve. So please move fast. You only have a couple days. Let's raise a little bit of money for the children with cancer. Try out some G Fuel Energy Formula. $5 off your first order by clicking the link in the description. Sugar-free, low-calorie, packed with a whole bunch of vitamins. Absolutely delicious. This is the Miami Nights Pina Colada flavor. My favorite flavor that they have, but they have over 50 that you can pick from. And you get $5 off by clicking the link in the description. And last but certainly not least, make sure to go and get yourself... You're up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Link in the description, download the app, fund the account any amount, even as little as a penny. It still works. It still counts. You still get your up to 12 free fractional shares. And if you refer one friend, click the little invite button, send it to one person that you know. Weeble is going to give you either $100 or $200 worth of free Apple stock, which you can keep and hold on to, or you can sell and use that cash to buy something you would rather have instead. And on top of that, I found out today that you can actually repeat this promo 10 times. So it's not just refer one friend for the $100 to $200 of free Apple stock. You can do this 10 times. So if you successfully refer 10 friends, they're going to give you in total $1,000 to $2,000 worth of free Apple stock, which is unbelievable. Please do not pass up on an opportunity. Weeble link in the description. Everything is linked in the description. I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. What do you think? Think it's a good idea, bad idea? Huh, not, not, not that it really matters. This is what I'm going to be doing anyway. But what are your thoughts on that right there? Do you think it's better to have two virtually identical index funds? Or would you rather have two different index funds and have more control over how things are allocated in terms of domestic or, 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 or international, small cap, large cap, mid cap, whatever. Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. Don't you dress us smiling. Peace.